And Penn State will work offensively first down from its own 20 yard line. Collins, the country's top ranked passer. Brad, change up for Indiana, playing a 5 3. Only three defensive backs on the field. On first down, the toss to Carter. Kajana hit low, submarined by Alfonso Thurman. And he maybe eked out a half yard. Indiana defensively had five up front to start that play, but Troy Drake, their fifth year senior, 11 tackles last week against. Michigan State is their leader. Hammerstein the other tackle. Pinnock and Davis on the outside. Trevor Wilmot had his best game of the year last season against Penn State with 10 stops. Terrell and Thurman who just made the last tackle. And Smedley two interceptions last week with Mucci, Hornecki and Lance Brown. The senior safety. The second down at 10 for Penn State. Off play action is Collins. Comes up firing and a little bit low intended for Justin Williams incomplete. And it'll bring up third down and 10. That time Indiana came with a nickel package, five defensive backs on the field, and that's really the game plan that Joe Novak is going to institute in this game to try to keep Kerry Collins a bit off balance. They're going to change up their fronts, change up their numbers of DBs, front men from three-man line, four-man line, and five-man line. It's a gambling defensive front, but they have to do something different. So far, it's worked through two plays. All that means is it's third and ten. Four wide outs for Collins. Comes up firing, and he's going to get the pass complete, but not for a first down. Philip Collins made the catch. Trevor Wilmot, the linebacker, made the stop, and Penn State will have to punt. When you're facing an explosive football team, tackling in the secondary is one of the keys, and that's what IU is going to have to do to stay in this game. Let things happen in front of them, come up, and make sure tackles. Joe Jurevicius on the season is season long as 51. He can air one out here if he chooses as Eddie Beatty drops back deep for the Hoosiers. Jurevicius almost had it blocked. In fact, it was deflected, so there's no flag on the play. And Indiana will take over. After just a 16-yard kick, thanks to Lance Brown. He's their top punt and extra point blocker, and he just got a piece of that one. It was very close, but the official very clearly signaled that he got a piece of the ball. Indiana, again, aggressively playing this football team from the left side. Lance Brown lays out. I don't know if he got a piece of it, really, but the punter kind of held up on the play, and it appeared to be a deflection. No matter what, he got away with it. He either got the ball or he got Jurevicious foot. <laughs> at any rate, it leaves Indiana at the Penn State 44. First down offensively. Pacey and a little keeper on the option. Now Pacey maybe got a yard, and that is all. Offensively for the Hoosiers. Alex Smith, their sensational redshirt freshman, the number six rusher in the country with Pacey and Lee. Ajamu Stoner makes his first start of the year today at wide receiver with Eddie Beatty in a bit of a slump. Matthews and McKinnon round out the receiving core. And up front, a guy that the pro scouts think might be a high draft choice as a pro guard, Andrew Green with Lukowski the other side, side the center, and Smith and Lewinsky are the tackles. No gain for Pacey on that keeper. It's second down and 10. And the give inside is to Smith. And Alex Smith goes inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. He got five against a Penn State defense that Adrian talked about. Nobody really knows that much about. We do know Brandon Noble starts for Eric Clare, who's out with that broken foot. Mazik, the other tackle, Perry and Atkins on the outside. The number nine tackler career-wise at Penn State is Brian Gelsheiser with Yaboa Cody and Smith on the outside. Brian Miller had two interceptions against Ohio State last week with Pittman, Dingle, and Holes. Out of the shotgun with four wide outs for Pacey. And the pass completed. And a first down to Beatty, and he breaks away. So much for the slump. Eddie Beatty with a big first down catch and a pickup of 13. Penn State came with a blitz from the corner right here. Read a hot receiver. Beatty and Pacey on the same page. Turned around, hit his man, and that's why the play worked. Aggressively from the corner right here. You see the man put. Beatty goes down and stops. Perfect execution by the quarterback and the wide receiver reading the same man. That soft coverage in the secondary by Penn State trying to disguise. Beatty makes one guy miss. Indiana's on the way with a nice drive. And they've got it to the Penn State 27-yard line. On first down, Pacey off play action rolls right into an outside linebacker and throws incomplete intended for a Jamu Stoner. 
John Pacey, a fifth-year senior, gutsy quarterback on the season. There's his numbers. His best game of 93 was against Penn State. <laughs> kidding John about that downstairs he said yeah I heard you on Thursday night give us some pub about uh, my 397 yards pass and then I kind of backhanded him with 285 of those are playing for the Giants and Thomas Lewis Thomas Lewis had a 99 yard hookup with Pacey in that 38 31 setback a year ago second down and 10 ball at the 27 the fans at Memorial Stadium kind of hold their breath right now hoping Indiana can capitalize on the partially blocked punt Glover the fullback Three, maybe four, and it'll bring up a third down situation. Brian Miller and Gelsheiser came out of the secondary and linebacker spot to run that, but I think Pacey checked that play off to the right side. Penn State looked a bit tilted to the strong side, the tight end, and ran the lead draw play to the weakness of the defense. That's what you're really going to have to force this Penn State team is to play honest. John Pacey told me yesterday that he has the green light to use all his audibles at any time within this game, hitting the short hitches at any time. He's off of him right here. Let's see if he goes to it to the right side of the field. A third down and seven. Just inside the 24-yard line. Smith. Well, he got a couple, that's all. A rather conservative call off the right side. Yeah. He's up fourth down and almost five. I think the crowd wasn't real happy with that call either. You know, you're trying to have to pick up seven yards, and you're running an isolation play to the outside. And it's solid football, I think, but when you're playing a team that's averaging 50 points a game, I don't know if that's going to get it done. So that brings out the field goal unit, and that means Bill Manilopoulos, who's five out of eight on the season, will line it up. His long this year is 37. This one's going to be from 38 yards. We'll check out from behind. Manilopoulos. Got plenty on it. Nope. No good. Pushed it a little bit to the right. And an opportunity goes awry for Bill Mallory and the Hoosiers of Indiana. Timeout with 10.31 to go first quarter. Indiana scared Penn State, but didn't score. They picked up one first down, then got a little bit conservative on third and seven and missed a 38-yard field goal. So now Penn State. Indiana in with a nickel. Lions from just inside the 22. And it's the fullback, John Whitman. And Whitman swarmed under after he got about a yard and a half. Number 38, the ball carrier, John Whitman. Drake and Davis in on the stop from the defensive front for Indiana. The guessing game that Joe Novak is playing and trying to keep Fran Ganner, offensive coordinator from Penn State, is a little bit off balance. He started the first series last time with a 5-3 look, five down linemen, three linebackers. This time he started with a four, a five nickel defensive back. So that's the guessing game. Ganner's going to have to play with him. Bit of a chess match going on. So far, it's paid off for the Indiana defense. And it paid off again. Brian Milne taken down by Nate Davis. Indiana's style of defense is an attacking, make plays happen in the backfield type defense. When you gash them, there are big plays there. But when they're attacking the line of scrimmage and making things happen in the backfield, you look bad for a while. Penn State will have to keep their patience, run the ball at different parts. That time, Nate Davis was not even blocked that time, so that's a busted assignment, and perhaps that offensive line is a bit confused with the different looks they're getting. The thing they've been concerned about with the Indiana defense is giving up big plays on third down, and Penn State's a pretty good big play team on third down. Third and nine here, and Collins fires incomplete. They made him roll out and throw on the run, and they'll have to punt again. Freddie Scott, the intended receiver. And you see Collins with head coach Absolutely. Joe Paterno. A little bit confused, like he did not feel that he had the right play called versus that defense. Joe Paterno right now, and I saw him again in the Michigan game, will try to settle down his players, say, listen, we got a long football game here, guys. We'll hit him okay. Let's just get back, get out of the sideline, talk over what they're doing, and come back out on offense. Defense has turned now to keep us in the game early. A little bit unusual. Sure is. Good job for Indiana's defense forcing two straight three and outs. Jura vicious punt. Eddie Beatty camps under this one. Takes it without a fair catch. Gutsy move and it pays off. He got about four on the return. An excellent field position again as Indiana this time will work from the 48 yard line. Let's take it down to Adrian. Brad, Indiana's really in shock here behind the bench. There's so much emotion back here. Coach Mallory is saying, guys, calm down. This is the way we practiced all week long. Don't be so surprised. Don't be so taken by the blue and white uniforms out here. This is what we expected. 
And that would come from a guy like Coach Mallory, wouldn't it? He is dead solid. You, you know what you're going to get from Bill Mallory every day. Two tight end set for the Hoosiers. Bushmeyer and McKinnon both in there. Alex Smith, the single setback, but it's Pacey to throw on first down. John fires outside, complete, and got it to the 48 yard line for a pickup of four. Let's throw it out to Mike Tirico. Michael? Brad, in the SEC, Mississippi State, six and four, but Indiana again offensively in Penn State territory. Second time today, and a second and five from the Nittany Lions, 47. Alex Smith, close to a first down. And Willie Smith made the tackle. Smith on Smith, and it's going to bring up third down, less than one. We had a nice visit with Alex Smith yesterday. Seems so in control of what he's looking to accomplish as a Big Ten running back. I mean, he knew stepping into this league it was going to be tough, but he said, you know, in all honesty, I had built it up to be so big, I really thought it would be tougher than it is. That's kind of surprising to hear, and he's got a great, great year going. There you look at his Should stats. be able to pass Darrell Thompson to the Minnesota Gophers and what he did in 86. If he keeps up his current pace, he'll have no problem. Third and one. Smith again. Has to spin his way for what looks like a first down, but it's going to be close. Phil Yabal Cody made first contact. And as they unpile, let's see what Tom Quinn, our referee, says. First down. So Bill Mallory's troops have picked up a couple of first downs, something that number two Penn State has been unable to do in their two offensive series. It's not really hard to read either one of these head coaches, Bill Mallory or Joe Paterno. They're so upfront and honest the way they answer your questions. They really give the game a lot of credit of football and just tell you honestly that it's players that make plays in this game. At the 41, first and 10, Indiana. 7.25 to go, first quarter, no score. Casey fires outside and a man wide open and badly underthrew Eric Matthews. Those are the type of throws John Pacey is going to have to make today to keep that Penn State defense honest. Penn State likes to come up with an eight-man front. Pacey probably audible to that play, and he has to complete those gimme throws that Penn State will give you on the outside, the fringes of the offense. Good news. Uh, good audible. Bad news. That's not the way to keep Chris Ditto, the backup quarterback, over on the bench. Bill Mallory will use both Pacey and Ditto in this football game. There's John's numbers from last year, and as Gary said, 285 of those went to Thomas Lewis, the number one draft choice of the New York football Giants. Second down at 10. And John looks like he's changing things up again. In fact, he's going to take a timeout. We'll take one as well with 7.20 to go first quarter. Indiana again in Penn State territory, and we are scoreless in Bloomington. That he's facing with the football at the Penn State 41 yard line second offensive possession for Indiana they missed a 38 yard field goal the first time they got their hands on the ball three wideouts Pacey throws a slant in and this one's right on the money first down a Jamu Stoner inside the 30 of the 26 of the Nittany Lions well he threw one into the ground like a catcher trying to throw a peg to second place but he came to second base excuse me but this time he came Put the ball right on target to Stoner. Stoner, talking to the coaches, had a great week of practice this week, and that's how you defeat a good sound defense, throwing strikes. Can't keep saying second base with a name like Pacey. Comes out <laughs> second base. And I, and I spit all over <laughs> myself, too. First down at the 26. We approach seven minutes, first quarter. Back to what they do best. Smith, but he lost the ball. Tremendous hit, but Pacey covered it. A loss of about five. Yaboa Cody with a big hit on Alex Smith, and Alex Smith, for all his big numbers, has had just a little bit of trouble with fumbling the football. That was a great stick, though. Had a big fumble last week against Michigan State. Here, a simple uh, zone play up the middle. Gets hit on the right side by Yaboa Cody. The ball pops loose, and Pacey makes a nice play keeping this ball to IU's side of the field. Yaboa so Cody, that was a picture tackle. Oh, it sure was. Put his helmet right on the football. Brings up second down and 14. Back outside, the Nittany Lion 30. Pacey throws screen pass on the outside to Smith, and he got back what he lost with a fumble. It'll still be third down and long after we check in with Mike Tirico. Brad talking about quarterbacks Danny Cannell, who bounced. They don't, they, got, they don't have enough special players. That's the problem. Third down and 10. 
Penn State loves to play a deep zone with a robber in the middle of the field. Let's see if they come with a cover. Indiana doesn't want to get it robbed here in the ninth play of a drive. Still looking for points. Casey loads it, reloads it, and goes down. Ooh, that'll make a coach, even in his mid-50s, do a dip on the sideline. Todd Atkins with the sack, and that takes him out of field goal range, too. Yeah, they they screwed they they messed up with uh, John Pacey a bit that time. Went man to man underneath with two deep uh, safeties, and John Pacey was a bit confused on the coverage. You see him try to get out of it to stay in field goal range, but with the sack, that's going to force them to punt. And Bill Mallory very upset that they aren't able to kick it three out of the play. Trying to pooch one now. Oh man, what a punt! But is it too deep? No, it's not. Down at the four. DeGiulio hit it a mile in the air. And Bob Kaiser got down to cover it. Penn State in a big hole when we come back. 4.52 to go, first quarter. Just under five minutes to go, first quarter. And Joe Paterno's troops have been starting in some bad field position all day long so far. This will be their third offensive possession. And there's the average field position, the 15. This one starts at the four after a great punt. Dejana Carter, the second time he's touched it today, and he picks up five onto the nine. Troy Drake in on the stop, and a little scuffle following the tackle. John Carter's going to have a tough time running against this front. Take a look at what Indiana is doing on the front right here. They have five down linemen here, here, right here, over here, and over here, five guys, and then three linebackers. That's the front that Indiana is using in this football game on a mix-up. They can't, they really can't do it a lot, but that's what they're giving them on and off. That should give Kerry Collins some room to put the ball up. We'll see if he does. Second down and five from the nine-yard line. Collins finds a big tight end, and I mean a big tight end. Kyle Brady, first down Penn State, their initial first down of the ball game, a pickup of 14. You're talking about a mismatch on the football field. It may be Kyle Brady. The man is huge. You know, he's the only guy that doesn't have to wear a tie on the road. There's not a shirt that can fit this guy. <laughs> you can see the perfect throw that uh, Collins puts in there to Brady, but uh, what a target. He had that denim dress shirt on last night. There was no hope of getting that thing buttoned around <laughs> that log he calls a neck. He is huge and maybe the best blocking tight end in the country. And you see he's got pretty good hands, too. First down for Collins. Goes right back to him. And out to the 32-yard line, a pickup of nine more. Talking with Kyle last night, he had a big smile on his face and said, we're just having fun playing right now. And part of that is because they're going to him a little more frequently as far as throwing him the football. Kyle Brady runs a little bit of a spin move right here. Goes into the linebacker, Thurman, and bounces out to the outside. He really creates his own space that time by coming up to Thurman, standing him up like he's going to block him, and then spinning off, reverse spinning off. Of course, Collins and Brady on the same page on that one. But, you know, when you have an opportunity to throw the ball between the eight and the one, there's about four yards of room there to throw it. You got more than nine. I got ten. First down. So back-to-back -back receptions by Brady of 14 and then 10. Pick up another first down, Penn State. The rest of the Big Ten lineup today. There's a big one going on later between Ohio State and Wisconsin. Illinois, Minnesota tonight. First and ten, Penn State back to back first down. To give to Carter. Pajana got a couple, that's it. Troy Drake, fifth year senior. Flag flies in late. Now we've had a little bit of skirmish after the last couple of plays, and let's see if this one's going to go on Indiana for a late hit. Personal foul, great hit on the defense. You just can't make too many mistakes against a team as good as Penn State or it will cost you and this one will cost them 15 yards. Brad and I think that's what Bill Mallory was trying to talk to his guy on the sideline that Adrian reported earlier. Sometimes you can get a big bit too high in these football games and play your right, yourself right out of the game by making silling penalties. Lance Brown this time number 25 right side of your screen. He takes a hit that's really uncalled for. The play's over right there just taking a cheap shot that time on Bucky Greeley and uh, you know that's a play that really didn't mean anything cost you 15 yards. 
Lance Brown, the Indiana coaches, had said the last couple weeks probably playing his best football of the season, but that was not a smart move. But he gives Indy against Penn State rather a first down at the 49. Collins comes up firing, quick slant, completes it to Bobby Ingram, who runs well after the catch. And picks up 13 and another first down for Penn State. Well, it appears to me that Kerry Collins now has a feel for what Indiana is trying to do. That time they came in with that 5-3 look. Kerry Collins audible to the quick slant. Gets it into the hands of, of, of Ingram. And, you know, when you have a lot of space in the secondary with only three defensive backs, Ingram is going to make people miss. First down now at the Indiana 38-yard line. Three minutes left first quarter, still scoreless in Bloomington. This play fake by Collins wants to throw a screen to Carter and does with blockers in front. And Kajana Carter, when you get him out there and you got two or three of those horses in front of him, that's when he's the most dangerous. He picks up 13 yards, another Penn State first down. Talking to Fran Ganner earlier, and uh, as you take a look at Bucky Greeley, asking him about the Penn State offense, I said, would it be you know, very uh, safe to say that you're running a lot of the same things you ran in the 60s, to 70s, and the 80s. He said, almost exactly. We just have great players right now. A little bit of a screen pass, but the athleticism of the offensive line for Penn State and the willingness of the receivers to block downfield as you take a look at Bobby Ingram is what makes the offense go. Collins, nice spin on a slant. And inside the 10 is Bobby Ingram. Boy, that was a good-looking move. Spun all the way around and threw a rocket, and it is first and goal, Penn State. Bobby Ingram, who was an All-Big Ten receiver last year, and when you consider that he was All-Big Ten as a junior and the, uh, really uh, a sophomore last year, and the two guys that uh, were drafted number one in the Big Ten, Derek Alexander and Thomas Lewis, are in the pros right now. You can understand what type of year and what type of player Bobby Ingram is. Penn State in the red zone, the best in the conference. And they've got it at the 10-yard line. Collins, first and goal. Looks left the whole way, comes back to the right, and completes it down to the five-yard line. Freddie Scott holds on there. It'll be second and goal as we check in with Adrian Karsten. Brad, the success that Collins is having on this drive has a lot to do with what he did in pregame. They actually took water bottles and soaked the footballs while he was passing in pregame warm-up. Now, the rain is starting to come down. The ball is getting wet on a moist turf down here. Taking care of details and pregame warm up has him down here inside the five yard line. And it's got Collins six for six on this drive. Second and goal. Penn State at the Indiana five. A minute 45 left in the quarter. Kajana Carter and Mill in the backfield. Carter gets the call. He also gets Lewis Pinnock all over. The defensive line of Indiana has done a nice job today. Again, Lewis Pinnock was aligned outside of the formation for Penn State and charged upfield. That was really what made the play. Again, trying to make those things happen in the backfield is what that front four for Indiana is going to try to do. It's Joe Novak, the defensive coordinator, who has done a nice job of mixing things on that chart he's got in his hand. And it brings up third and goal for Penn State. Remember, Brady's got a couple of catches for first downs on this drive. They're tight end. From the seven of Indiana. Play action to the end zone. Touchdown. Brady. He's a big target. No problem for Collins to find him, and Penn State on the board first. You do what you're supposed to do, throwing the ball, make the proper reads. There's usually someone open on every play. Then you still have to pitch the ball to him. Kerry Collins was right on target with that throw. Collins to hold, and Brett Conway in for the point after. Conway's only missed one all year. And he puts this one right through the middle. Two times for first downs, the third time for the touchdown on third down and goal. Kyle, Kyle Brady. Brady. His, one more look at this touchdown pass. Here's Terrell right here, the inside backer. Now watch from up here in the booth, it appears that Brady is very open on this play. But in Collins' vision, if we stop it right here, 
There's not much opening right there. You look at the seam. There's only maybe a yard and a half to throw that football. Look at the impeccable timing on this throw to Brady right over the shoulder of the linebacker. And that's when you're executing well. There's not a defense made that can stop that play. Number one executioner in the country, if you will. Number 12, this passer rating 194.75. You said earlier about 30 points higher than anybody else in the country. And Kevin Mason of Syracuse is next in line. He's at about 166 in a kind of a complicated system for rating quarterbacks. But when you got that big a lead, you know you've done a pretty good job all year. Well, Kyle, uh, Kerry Collins has really burst onto the scene this year, but I think it was the end of last season that really, really found himself. He had a great comeback victory against Michigan State, and when he kind of went up against Heath Shuler and outplayed him in that bowl game, I think that's really got him going for the 94 season. Probably the final play of the first quarter is a second and seven Indiana, their own 34-yard line. KC double pumps, waited too long to throw it. It's incomplete, and some boo birds out. Because John Pacey's thrown a couple passes the fans don't like at Memorial Stadium today. They got to like what happened in the first quarter, though their team's not on the board. They're hanging tough with the number two team in the country. It is 7 0 Penn State. It was over a hundred years ago that a small group of men had an idea to combine the new technology of G. Many points, and now they got a huge third and seven. From the shotgun. Pacey with time, now running out of time, and trying to run for the first down, and does. That's what he does well, Gary. He really does. Uh, George Ballou, offensive coordinator, and Bill Mallory told us when the running game is going well, John Pacey is the perfect quarterback for our offense because he meshes in so well with the play action passes and he scrambles up. They have to throw the ball a lot. Chris Ditto is going to come in. He's the prototype thrower and can really drop back and make things happen from the pocket. But I think that was a huge first down for Indiana to keep this game in within uh, striking distance. They did not want to give Penn State back the ball after somebody marches 96 yards on you with a three and out. First down at the 45. And the give is to Cheney. Jermaine Cheney might have gotten a yard. I doubt it, though. Two, got Perry in on the hit. And Terry Killens, the outside linebacker, in there for Willie Smith that time, too. You know, Penn State's defense, Brad, has gone. There hasn't been many injuries on offense, but their defense has had a few. We talked about Eric Clare. Also, oh Vin God, Stewart, yeah. another defensive line lineman, is out. Clint Holes, their hero back, is gone. And their nickelback, Mark Tate, won't play this game either. Jerry Sandusky, when we talked to him, said he was very concerned. Second down and nine. A minute into the second quarter. 7 0 Penn State. Smith, Alex Smith, holding on to the ball with both hands that time, and he got out for about four. It'll be third down, close to six. Chris Mazik in on the stop. Let's check in with Adrian Karsten. Brad, interesting about Indiana. Unique in that they vote a captain every week. Now, John Pacey has been the captain ever since we did the opener here at Cincinnati. He is out here living by his own words. He told every single man, over 100 guys on the team today, play like a man. Welcome Penn State to Indiana. <laughs> He was hoping that Indiana would be about 7-1 when this date took place, though. That's what he told us earlier in the year. On a third down over the middle. Man open, and the throw delivered low, and Rich Kearney can't hold on to it. Yeah, it was another throw that uh, Pacey threw a bit low, and when you're throwing into the wind, that you don't throw a perfect spiral. That wind will knock it down completely, and there's one that he really didn't follow through. He was kind of just trying to give him a touch pass on that one and pick up the first down, and... Indiana's going to be forced to punt, but at least they did pick up one first down, and the punt should drive him back to inside the 20. The Julio, an all Big Ten punter last year, and he dropped one beautifully inside the five going with the win. This is against the win, and to Mike Archie. And this one not nearly as good off the side of his foot, and almost hit somebody over there in row one. And they're going to mark it out at about the 32 yard line, and that's only a 22 yard punt after a beauty going the other way. Coming up later today, IBM ATP talked about earlier. Look at the numbers. First quarter scores, and now we're into the second quarter. That's just as good. And an end around coming. And it's Bobby Ingram to the corner. Nice job to stretch it out. Indiana did a heck of a job to stay with that. And Eric Smedley made the tackle. Absolutely. Eric Smedley knew where his help was. He had Lance Brown inside. He took away the reverse to the outside from Ingram and forced him back inside. 
Nice play call right here. You see the reverse play trying to keep the pursuing Indiana defense on it. It looks to appear. You see how Smedley takes outside in kind of pursuit and forces it back to Thurman and all his buddies. Eric had nine tackles and a couple interceptions in the losing effort against Michigan State last week. Second down and nine. Collins wants to go right back to Carter after the play fake and does, but a nice open field tackle there by Derek Terrell, the inside linebacker. Terrell got a bit screened that time by the official that time, and he had to kind of work his way around him, but Penn State's passing offense is so patient and so balanced that you really come to the feeling if you're sitting back there in pass coverage is, uh, boy, I don't know what direction he's going with the ball. Third down at five. Make it six. Collins has hit his last eight passes. We anticipate one here. Here comes a blitz. Collins throws a wide out screen. Is it going to be a first down to Freddie Scott? I think so. Tripped up, but he gets it out to the 42, maybe the 43 yard line and good enough to move the sticks. Well, that play was close to not being completed behind the line of scrimmage that time. Freddie Scott it has to catch that ball behind the line scrimmage and uh, Kerry Collins really had the perfect play on because Indiana came with a strong safety blitz on that play and they had the screen to the wide out and picked up the first down. So Collins has hit his last nine passes. We talked about efficiency. There's his numbers on the day including the touchdown throw to his tight end. Deep handoff. Looked like it was going to be play action and now it's play Carter. Kajana Carter still on his feet. And flags go down as Carter gets all the way to the 28 yard line. 29 yard run, but let's see if part of that's going to be negated by a penalty late in that run. Collins almost didn't get the handoff to Carter to start that play, and then Kajana was out there picking up his blocks. Here's Tom Quinn. The illegal block on Penn State, and indeed they're going to bring it back. First time you meet Kijana Carter, you're surprised by the size of Kijana Carter. The width. He's, it really, he's maybe <laughs> five foot ten, but he is a wide body, and of course his speed and the whole package, that's what really makes him tough. He kind of slashes through those tackles. There's not a lot of faking when he's running. He gashes through those arm tackles. Really a gifted running back. Had a career high four touchdown day last week in the lopsided victory over Ohio State. 63 to 14 last week as Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions handed Ohio State its most lopsided loss in 48 years. We said, Joe, did you think it would go that way? He said, no way. They thought Ohio State was pretty good. It's just everything went right. Today they've been kept in check pretty well by Indiana. 7-0. Second quarter, first down at the 40 of the Hoosiers. Archie now. Two or three before Alfonso Thurman. And John Hammerstein make the tackle. Considering what a great year Kajana Carter had last year before he hurt his leg and, and was forced to leave, and you know what a talent everyone thought he was. Surprising reading through their press guide when the season was starting, there was still doubt of whether Archie and Pitts and C Carter, who would be the starter. I mean, that, that's the type of talent they had in that three-headed tailback for Penn State. And that's just unbelievable to think about that this guy wouldn't be the All-American candidate that he is. He has stampeded over some pretty good opposition this year. Second down and seven. Ball at the 37. Indiana maybe offside there. Collins off play action. Throws it over the middle. Almost intercepted. Allen had his hands on it, and Eric couldn't hold it. And apparently no flag either, as I thought. It was going to be <laughs> Pinnock in the neutral zone jumping offside, but he got back, I guess. Well, there, there was a couple of potential penalties that time in Indiana. The ball was, uh, Kerry Collins was attempting to go outside this time to either Ingram or Kyle Brady, but he came back late to Ingram, and you can see right there, Eric Allen kind of ran through, but the ball was tipped at that time up front by Derek Terrell. Bobby Ingram did a decent job playing defense back there to get a hand on that, or it would have been an interception. Best in the Big Ten on third down. It's third and seven, Penn State. Archie in motion. Collins stands tall, lays it out. This one is intercepted. Picked off by Eric Smedley. Flagged down, but I think it may have been a face mask after the interception. And now coming up with the ball is Freddie Scott, but it's Indiana football. That may be the first misread that I've seen Kerry Collins do. 
He had Bobby Ingram wide open in the middle of the field. He tried to force it into Freddie Scott, and there was a face mask penalty after the catch as was called. Eric Smedley's having a pretty good week, huh? Two interceptions last week. A pickoff here. He's face masked that'll add to it. And Indiana will take over on offense. And it's been a long time since Kerry Collins has been picked off his first in the last 69 attempts. You have to stick with your reads. Here's Ingram up here. He will come to the middle of the field, and there's literally no one in the middle of the field this time, and he tries to go the corner route. You see the middle linebacker. You stop it right here. Look at the opening that you have to throw the ball in right there. That's as easy as you can get going to better than one of the best receivers in the country, and he tries to go on the corner route to Freddie Scott Jr. So one quarterback throws an interception. One new quarterback enters the Indiana lineup. And the tall, talented Chris Ditto will take the quarterback controls for Indiana. Long handoff to Smith. Too long. And he's going to lose a yard. Well, here's Chris Ditto, the big kid Gary talked about, who's the pure pocket passer. 6'6", 215. Chris Ditto a bit disappointed this year. Thought he would play a little bit more football. He gave a couple of games against Northwestern and Iowa. Dearly didn't even get in the game. And Bill Mallory said, thinking over later, he wished he had put him in the game. And he's the future of Indiana, but this is still John Pacey's football team. And this has been the rotation. Don't yes. take this to mean John Pacey won't be back out. Ditto's been in every game we've done uh, this year or seen this year of Indiana. He's come in in the second quarter, with the exception of those couple games Gary talked about. Second down at 11. Play fake by Ditto, and he lays it out. And he got it to Tom McKinnon, the tight end. You want to know what makes this a big play for Tom McKinnon? That is the first pass he's ever caught for Indiana. He used to be, a, he's taking oh, it home, keep too. Keep the ball. He's going to keep that. the ball. He weighed 320 when he came to Indiana. <laughs> they made him lose some weight or asked him to to become a tight end, and he gets his first catch here. I mean, this looked about as open as you're going to get a guy in this field. McKinnon gets it. He rambles up close, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling, as our friend would say, <laughs> and he gains a yard and a half. Yeah, but he's still taking the ball home. <laughs> Slim down to 285. Heck of a blocker. But they finally throw one to him, and he's psyched. <laughs> I don't blame him. Third down at seven. Four wideouts for Ditto. Buys himself some time. Fires a rocket to Beatty. First down. There wasn't much room there. And Beatty's got another catch and a pickup of 11. I really thought Willie Smith, number 52, the linebacker dropped in the zone, was going to come out of the backside of Chris Ditto's vision and intercept this ball. But Ditto has such a strong arm on this play, he just guns it in there and picks up the first down. See Ditto trying to go over the middle on this good zone coverage by Penn State. Tries to get the ball in the middle. Now he scrambles out from the left side of the screen. Number 52 is baiting Ditto. He just misjudged his arm strength. I thought he had an interception. Picks up a first down. 8.20 to go in the half. 7-0 Penn State. Ditto fires out. It's got a man open again. It's a Jamu Stoner. And Stoner into Penn State territory for 15 more. Kim Herring made the tackle. Let's go to Mike Tirico. Mike. Getting exciting there. It's exciting in New Jersey. Seahawks at one time. Hit a tunnel and keep on going. On a first down, the running game has not been working. Smith dropped for a loss. This one of about four. And Penn State's defense with Brad Scioli making a big hit. Scioli is the, uh, I think, the only true freshman that's playing on that defense. That's right. Rotating in, coming in with for Jeff Perry. Uh, they both will see action. You know, Penn State defense is not impossible to move the ball against, though. Rutgers earlier in the year put up 500 yards against them. So if you're patient throwing the ball, I think there's some holes in that secondary. Indiana having trouble on the ground, but for that matter, so is Penn State. Second down and 14. Ditto. Whew. Had some smoke on that one to Kearney. I'll tell you right now, Penn State and Jerry Sandusky will determine that they cannot sit in zone coverages and stop Chris Ditto. He's going to have to put a press on him, bring some of those linebackers and see if he, how he throws against the rush. Right here, no one in his face. The guy throws a rocket in between the zones, and there's not a zone coverage that moves quick enough to stop that play. Three for three for Ditto for 34 yards. Nice changeup between Pacey and Ditto, between the two quarterbacks, different styles, caused the people on defense a little bit of a problem. First down at the Penn State 35 yard line. Sean Glover and Glover wrapped up. And 
And that rushing total is going to go backwards instead of forwards. Chris Mazik in on the tackle there. Let's check in with Adrian. Brad, Joe Pa is getting down to business here now. He takes the jacket off, rolls up the <laughs> sleeves. Defense goes in and says, look, guys, the defense is going to have to win the game today. Remember what we said before kickoff? Defense doesn't know how good they are or how good they have to be. Well, we know that the pant legs are always going to be rolled up, but the shirt sleeves, that's a different deal. It's when you're getting serious. <laughs> he started doing that before these Astros are fields, though. That's right. He was worried about the mud on that one pair of dress pants back about 40 years ago. Didn't want him to throw a screen, double pumps now, and throws that one away and probably a wise move. It's still going to bring up third down and 10. Gelsheiser and Mazik got a little heat on him. Gelsheiser, another one of those big, big Penn State linebackers. And Mazik, who had an interception for a touchdown last week. You always wonder about those defensive linemen. They have those 51s and 52s. Uh -huh. They're a little faster than the average guy. They probably started out as outside linebackers, beefed them up a little bit to 270, 80 pounds, and now they move inside. He picked one off, went in about 10 yards against Ohio State for a touchdown last week in a lineman's dream. Third and 10. Here comes a blitz on Ditto. Loads it and airs it for Stoner. Touchdown! Jamu Stoner, his first start of the season, 35 yards, touchdown Indiana, and a point away from a tie game. We talked about Jerry Sandusky, he wasn't going to sit in the zone, they come with the blitz, Chris Ditto does a perfect job of recognizing that, Stoner baits his man to the outside, beats Jason Collins to the post, and a perfect drive culminated by Ditto to put this game in a deadlock 7-7. 75-yard drive and nine plays, and Ditto caps it with a touchdown. We're tied. Either Bobby Knight walked into the stadium or <laughs> Indiana just scored against they, Penn State. They just scored, capping a 75-yard <laughs> drive and nine plays at Jamu Stoner from 35 off the hand of Chris Ditto. And we're tied at seven. Ditto four out of five on that drive. And now... Another great thing in that drive against the win. Right. Penn State with the win in their offense. Only six minutes left in the second quarter. Now Archie and Fletcher will drop back awaiting the kick from Manilopoulos. Indiana, I think, has stunned even their own crowd. This is as good a crowd as we've seen in this building any time we've been here, I think. And a little bit of a mishandle by Fletcher. He finally picks it up, and now he finds himself a seam. Lance Brown there to meet him, or he might have been off to the races. Out to the 34-yard line, and that's where Penn State's offense will take over with 5.54 left in the half when we come back. Bill Mallory's Hoosiers of Indiana staying with the number two team in the country, deadlocked with just under six minutes left first half. Penn State will have its best starting field position. Hey, you were right. Uh, I, I thought it was. They were happy about the game, but Bob Knight did walk in the house. <laughs> the night watch is over. From the 34, counter to Kajana Carter. Woo, nice hit by Trevor Wilmot. We told you he had his best game of 93 against Penn State when he had 10 tackles, and that time he drops Carter for a loss. The strength of the Indiana defense are their inside, I mean, they're three linebackers. Terrell, Thurman, and Wilmot, all three are seniors. They're trying to force all the plays the front four is to these guys, and they have to make sound tackles like Wilmot did on that play. You know, Brad, and, uh, the, you say the night watch. Uh, Indiana's the only place where night watch is bigger than Baywatch. <laughs> and we know what's big on Baywatch. <laughs> Collins off play action. Down the middle of Brady, the tight end. He's got another one of these into Indiana territory all the way to the 47 yard line. Big target and another big play, 18 yards. Let's check in with Mike Tirico quickly. Mike. Gentlemen in the Southwest Conference. Just over five minutes to go, but Penn State's moved it back into Indiana territory at the 48 yard line. There's Brady, the tight end, who comes over and sets up now on the left side. Again, a 5 3 front with three defensive backs on the field. Freddie Scott hustles over wide left as well. Collins looks his way. Freddie Scott inside the 40 in a tough run. Still on his feet. Just about tiptoed down the sideline. He did tiptoe for a first down to the 36-yard line. 
Of course, Freddie Scott is a name very familiar to me. I was able to throw to his dad when he played with the Detroit Lions. And, uh, you know, Freddie's a little better runner after he catches the ball than Freddie was. and uh, Maybe a little bit faster than the old man, too. Well, Freddie was a, a great, what do they say, possession receiver. Uh -huh. Freddie wasn't too bad. But uh, young Freddie, I've seen him probably since he's been six or seven years old, and he's really grown into an outstanding football player for Penn State. Came over to you last night, and you were telling me you used to throw the ball around to him in the locker room for the Lions, and uh, <laughs> he has grown into quite a receiver. First down at the 36. Here's a toss. Carter, broken tackle. Kajana still on his feet, breaks another one. Tremendous run by Carter. Inside the 20. 14 more. He just won't go down. Let's check in with Adrian. Right, I overheard a comment from Coach Mallory the other day. And remember now, we're talking about a coach been around a long time, at least as long since Archie Griffin was the only man to win the Heisman Trophy in 73, and, or rather 74 and 75. He compared Kajana Carter to Archie Griffin. He called uh, Coach Jim Mewling, the offensive line coach. He thinks Carter has greater speed, greater acceleration than Archie Griffin ever had. Boy. That's saying a lot. That is. That's a pretty nice compliment. Pretty nice running back. First down inside the 20 again now for Penn State. Collins comes up firing, going to throw the fade for Scott. Freddie pulls it in. Touchdown. Wow. Yeah, I think he's got better hands than Dad, too. Oh, wow. <laughs> 18 yards, touchdown. Collins' second scoring toss of the day. Every time that Indiana has come with that 5-3 front, Kerry Collins has audibled either to a slant or a fade. They are not going to allow Indiana to come with this front without forcing him to play man-to-man. -man. Boy, his left or right foot, I'm not sure which one dragged on that play, but it was really close to him catching that ball as he oh, stepped on the left toe scrape. I can see it. And I'm not sure if his right foot didn't come down before his left foot scraped it. I'd like to take one more look at that. No matter what, it was a nice catch. And a quick drive of one minute and 31 seconds. That's more like Penn State and what they've done this year as they took it 66 yards in just a minute and a half. But we're going to stop it just as he catches it. Right there, he catches the ball. His foot is off the ground. His next foot that comes down is out of bounds, and then he drags his left foot. That is not a touchdown. That is out of bounds. Now, Penn State might have scored on the next play, but they did <laughs> not score on that play. As it is, they call an 18-yard touchdown, capping a 66-yard march. Five plays in just a minute and 31 seconds. And Bill Mallory's troops now do have 529 of their own to work, considering how well their offense worked going into the win with Chris Ditto the last time they had it. And I think we may have seen the end of that 5-3 front for Indiana because Kerry Collins, the last six times he's seen it, is audible to a pass, and they're going to burn him with that front there. They use it, and uh, the time of possession in that drive wasn't too long, as you said before. 25th score in two minutes or less. That is just incredible. And coming into the game of their 52 scoring drives, the average scoring drive was two minutes and 15 seconds. That's unheard of. And that one just took them a minute and 31. That first one was an ancient drive for them, as I talked about earlier, a little over four minutes. And with the win, the kick carries way out of the end zone. So Indiana will work from its own 20-yard line with 4.29 left in the half and gives us time to check in with Adrian. Respect intended. Tom Quinn's staff uh, of referees and officials is the best in the Big Ten, has been for a long time. Tom Quinn, the referee, goes over to the field judge, the man who made the call, and I overheard him say, watch the player. Watch his feet, not the ball. And you can see the official's eyes on the ball. The, and then he looks down and sees his left foot drag. His right foot came down before his left foot. That was a poor call, and it will be an apology to Bill Mallory later in the week. That won't mean much if he can't come back into this game. Still only trailing Penn State by a touchdown. First down at the 20. Ditto wants to throw the quick out and does complete. Pickup of about five to Dorian Wilkerson, a freshman who's starting to see more and more time as they're going to the younger receivers who seem to be pretty gifted in Wilkerson and Ajamu Stoner, who has the touchdown catch today. And when you add in uh, Alex Smith and Chris Ditto, you got a lot of reason, if you're a Hoosier fan, to look forward to the future. Mm -hmm. And a lot of skilled players that'll be making their presence felt in the Big Ten. Ditto's only missed once. And that was on the throwaway on the screen. He just threw it into the ground. Second down and five. Smith, big hole this time for Alex Smith. Cuts outside and keeps his footing. 
And that's more like what we've grown accustomed to seeing from this redshirt freshman. 16 yards, and he showed Gary a little bit of everything. He really did. He got a good block from Steve Lee that time up front, his fullback, number 37. First time they've been able to get some space on the isolation play. And when he slashes out into the secondary, remember, this is a guy that's got 4'4 four, four speed as a freshman. And, you know, the size of him as a, a young player, he's really going to be a load here as he... A lot of people comparing him to Anthony Thompson and Vaughn Dunbar, two great names for IU rushing in the past. Only 22 yards on nine carries, but that by far his best effort of the day has given Indiana a first down at the 41. 345 left in the half. The toss, and now the end around is Stoner. Looking for a block from his quarterback. Cuts back inside and got about three. Ditto got out there. Looked like Yaboa Cody was waiting in the wings. To make the hit. And they force Stoner back inside. Yaboa Cody is the man that stopped this from being a huge play that time. A whole Penn State defense was on the left side of the field from behind here. Yaboa Cody's the only guy. Two different people tried to knock him down and he forced the play back inside. I thought the play was going to pick up 20 yards yep. when it first started out to the, to the left. They've only run Stoner once before this year and he went 43 yards for a touchdown. That time he only got three thanks to Phil Yaboa Cody. Second down and seven at the 44. We've got three minutes left in the half. 14 7 hit the line. Ditto fires outside. That ball gets there in a hurry, and it's lucky it did because closing over there was Tony Pittman. By number three, Pass Matthews. complete to Eric Matthews. Yeah, so impressed with Chris Ditto's arm strength. Remember, he's thrown into about a 15 to 20 mile an hour win. Usually when you're throwing into the wind, you like to throw the ball between the numbers because when you throw the ball out in the flat, it has a tendency to drift. That time he just fired it out there, kind of held the wind like a guy. Those great golfers can hold those shots into the wind, you know? Like you. <laughs> <laughs> I was fishing for that one, I'll tell you. Third down. Here's the biggest third down of the day, bar none. Indiana trying to keep a drive alive before halftime. Third and a short three. They need to get to the 49 of Penn State. Giving them the hitches. Two tight ends set, but they'll come up throwing, and they pick up the first down. And whoops, they say he didn't hold on. Take it back. Eric Matthews couldn't hold it. He was open in front of Brian Miller. A lot of people saying the Indiana offense should go for it. I do not agree. They got to punt the ball. The explosiveness of the Penn State offense. Let's kick it down there and try to see if you can get a stop. But, you know, 202. They don't even have to go to a two-minute offense no. for Penn State. That's just a normal drive. That would be exactly a normal drive for him, especially if Archie can feel this DeGiulio punt that's upcoming. DeGiulio got a little more on this one. Still an end-over-end -end punt. And it hit a Penn State player. Ball loose. And Penn State got back on top of it. I think Tony Pittman is the guy it hit, and he may have covered it. The officials already said There's Penn still, State. Still a lot of fighting going on about him, but Pittman came down there. He was the outside man trying to block on the outside, and I think it hit him in the foot. And let's see if he's the guy to cover. There's Tony on the bottom. His... Those are the type of plays I think an underdog team needs to upset a team that's one or two in the country right now. Pittman tries to pick it up still, but he clearly wraps himself around the ball. But uh, those are the type of turnovers, unforced turnovers, where the wall just hits you in the back of the leg while you're trying to block that an underdog team can turn and make this to 14-14 instead of 14-7 or perhaps even 21-7 if Penn State puts another drive on them. Charles Anthony Pittman, Tony Pittman Jr., if you will. His dad, a former All-American. Penn State for Joe Paterno. So now it's inside the 15-yard line. With 151 left, and as Gary said, when you've got the offense Penn State has, and you've got the wind, watch out, don't have a letdown if you're an Indiana defender. They'll keep it on the ground. And still, they're going to get a big play out of Kajana Carter, who goes out for about 13. Lance Brown made the tackle. Kajana Carter just reads his block. He may have as good a vision yep. of any running back playing today. He's got a 7.7 yard average when he carries the ball. Of course, he fits in well into this offense because it's so balanced, but he is a real slasher. He might be a little bit shaken up. John is down on one knee after ripping off that first down run. And he maybe is holding that thumb that he dislocated earlier in the year against Temple. Looks to be favoring his hand a little bit. He's got it wrapped, and that's 
and what they're going to check, I think. That's exactly what it is. And this is the first time that he hasn't had the full kind of protection. They've slimmed down that cast this time. 27 yard line, first down, Penn State. Collins rifles it, intercepted. Picked off by Eric Allen. He had his hands on one earlier. He keeps his hands on this one. Gary Collins just doesn't throw interceptions, and he's thrown two in this half. I'll tell you, that was great coverage that time by Eric Allen. He baited Kerry Collins into thinking he was covering the back of the flat, and then when Collins wind, winded up for the throw, he just dropped back and took the deep wide receiver. He thinks he's got Bobby Ingram to the outside, and there's Eric Allen dropping in his zone and making the play. Another misread, actually the same play on both of his interceptions, trying to stick it in between the zone. It's a great individual effort by Allen to get up there and swipe that one. This is the best starting field position for Indiana. See what they can do with it. With 137 left in the half, they trail by seven. And Ditto that time hit as he threw. It'll be incomplete. Penn State came with an all-out blitz that time. They brought eight people trying to outman the Indiana offense in those situations you have to just get that ball in and out of your hands if you're the quarterback and put it up in the air and get a big play out of it. Jerry Sandusky looking on hoping his defense can stop Indiana now before intermission and preserve the touchdown lead that the Nittany Lions have right now at the 44 second down of 10. Indiana two timeouts remaining. Here in the final 90 seconds. Ditto wide open over the middle. He got it to Eddie Beatty. And Beatty won't go down. Finally does at the 39-yard line. And Gary, you have to feel good for Eddie Beatty. Here's a senior who's been starting forever, it seems, and didn't start today because he's had a slump recently. He's got three catches in the half. Yeah, Eddie Beatty came in. George Blue, the offensive coordinator, told us he had a long talk with him, said, hey, you got to work your way back on the field. 109 left in the half on a third down at five, and this pass is complete, but it's short. And now maybe you do think about going on fourth and three. Beatty made the catch, but well short of the first down, and Indiana's going to have to talk it over here because they've got a fourth down coming up. And there's no way they can kick a field goal into this win with 58 seconds left. They'll talk it over, so will we. Time out on the field in Bloomington, and we'll be back with Penn State leading right after this. Now here in the second quarter, 14-7 Penn State and a fourth down and three for Indiana. Play of the day so far at the Penn State 37. And penalty markers all over the field. Now is it going to be fourth down and eight all of a sudden instead of fourth and three? Good ball. Ball start. Offense. Boy, you call a timeout, you come out to run a play, and you get a false start penalty, and all of a sudden it's fourth and eight. Penn State was partly responsible for that, though. They jumped out of one defense into another very abruptly and had somebody on the offensive line move, and I think Indiana needs to punt the ball now. They don't need to give back the ball to Penn State now with 58 seconds to go on the 40-yard line. Punt it. And right you are. That is the smart play. It's not the crowd favorite, as you can tell. And now they probably wish, as you said during the break to me, Gary, yeah, they I, wish they I, wouldn't I have taken the timeout. I didn't like the timeout to begin with. You can't give the ball to back to Penn State with, with the win in 50 seconds to go if you don't make it. Julio trying to lay one down inside the 10. It looks like he has again. Oh, boy. How close is it? Inches or now, touchback? Called it a touchback, touchback. I think. I think they did, too. The player's body in college football does not have to be in the field to play. Just the ball. It's different than pro football. In pro, the body and the ball has to be in front of the line. Let's look how close this play was. It's going to roll and roll. Comes right down the line. Now, it's just the ball. It's not the player. The ball touched the line. That was a good call. Yeah, that was a good call. So now you've got Penn State with their high-powered offense with 46 seconds, a full complement of timeouts, and 80 yards away for Kerry Collins, though he has thrown a couple picks today, also has two touchdowns. Right, and, and the officials are now up to 50%. <laughs> it's all going to work out for you during the course of a game. Let's see what Penn State does with it. 46 seconds left. Ingram and Scott, just a two-wide receiver set, but Archie's on a wing right there, you can see. He's a dangerous receiver. They're going to give it to him on an end around. And he's got great wheels. And he is out across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Well, now with 39 seconds to go, and Penn State having all three timeouts left, 
You better hold on, IU, because it's going to get real interesting right now. It only takes two more passes, and you'll have the ball on the 35-yard line. First down at the 42. Collins comes up, fire wide open. Ingram down the middle. He's into Indiana territory at the 43. And 32 seconds left, and they haven't had to use a timeout because they're moving the sticks. Well, they will. They will now because they might. They have plenty of timeouts left. You only have 32 seconds, and they do call a timeout. Joe Paterno knows he can't take him to heaven with him, so he'll take one here with 32 seconds left, and we'll be back. Come on, guys, we're going to be late. And you add the wrist problem to that dislocated thumb from earlier in the year, and the right hand is not feeling too good, so we'll keep you posted. Right now, it's Penn State with 32 seconds left, two timeouts left, and a first and 10 at the Indiana 43. Collins pooch pass inside of Archie. Broke a tackle and then ran into Trevor Wilmot, who made the stop at the 36, a pickup of seven. Big stop by Trevor Wilmot because he stopped him short of a first down. I'm surprised Penn State doesn't take a timeout here. The clock is running down. They're going to hurry up. Second down. Collins stands tall down the middle. Freddie Scott to the 13. And now they take the timeout with four seconds left. They really should have taken a timeout prior to that play because they are going to finish this half with one timeout. They're going to put the field goal team on and kick the field goal. They're going to bring out Brett Conway. It's easy to do it up here, I'll tell you. It sure is, especially as high as we are. We can see everything develop up here. <laughs> so the sophomore out of Lilburn, Georgia. Both teams kind of got burned with their timeouts. Indiana took a timeout prior to a penalty and punt the ball, give uh, Penn State an extra 25 seconds, and then Penn State on that little pooch pass or shuffle pass, as uh, some people call it, uh, uh, do not take a timeout and, and waste about 14 seconds in that drive. There's Conway, former uh, All-State soccer player at Parkview High School down near where I live. He was one heck of a football kicker and soccer player. Six out of seven on the season. As long as you see is 39, and they won't ask for 39 here. This one will be more like 30. But Manilopoulos missed one in uh, a similar spot. And while they do have the wind at their back, it might be swirling a little bit. So it is right in the middle of the field, though. Spot it down for Brett Conway in the final play of the first half. Trying to tack three more on for Penn State. As Bill Mallory looks on, his troops have played the number two team in the country strong for a half, but they're going to be trailing at halftime by a 10-point margin. Kick is good. State, and people are saying you're holding them. <laughs> that's, you know, right. that's the kind of offense they have, but it is 17-7, to and uh, I think the difference has been Chris Ditto in the first half. He came in 9 for 12 passing and kind of hit Penn State's zone. And remember, Indiana gets the ball to start the third quarter, and they have the wind as well. This kick will go into the end zone touch back and Indiana will work from the 20. I think that's a great call by Penn State taking that win in the fourth quarter. If it's a football game and they have to keep their guys in there and have to throw the ball they're going to keep the win. They're going to see if they can stop Indiana in the third quarter of this game and uh, when they have the win and then when they have their subs in maybe <laughs> they get to throw the ball. Well they haven't had to use any of them today that's for sure. No it's a great football game and I agree with keeping Ditto in. He's got the hot, hot hand and uh, the running game is not going to be Penn State. They're going to have to keep him honest with the passing game. It's the first half all year that John Pacey the fifth year senior in the middle of your screen has not started. First play third quarter. Indiana from its own point. Alex Smith the ground game is not developed for them today and Smith got out for about a two yard game. Cliff Dingle up from the secondary to make the stop. Now these slashing isolation pay plays handing that ball deep to Alex Smith really hasn't been much for IU's offense today. He had that one big run when he kind of hit the offense to the weak side of the Penn State defense. But throughout the game I think it's the passing game the short passing game that's really kept IU in the football game. Jason Collins comes in as a nickelback for Penn State expecting pass on second down and nine. Wilkerson the man in motion. Ditto loads it, fires outside. Beatty, big catch by Eddie Beatty, short of the first down, but he had to go high and then get the foot down low, and he is about a yard short. That's Eddie's fifth catch of the day. 
Penn State really concedes those out passes to the sideline. And if you have the quarterback that's going to take it and throw it out there and you pitch and catch it with good consistency, they're going to give you that throw throughout the game. Then if you complete a few, then they'll try to change up with the coverage. But when they're in man-to-man -man coverage or a deep zone, they're going to give you that throw. Zaddy's numbers today came in as the number nine receiver of Indiana record books as far as career catches. On short yardage, Smith gets it. Alex takes it out, runs into Brian Gelsheiser, but he does have a first down out near the 33-yard line. Alex Smith probably doing the thing he loves most, playing football on Saturday, maybe outside of deer hunting. That's He's right. He's talking to you, right? <laughs> He's a strong running back, but he said he was deer hunting a couple of weeks ago. He said, I got one. I was about two hours into the woods, and it took me forever to drag that thing out. So Gelsheiser drags him out at the 33-yard line. Tough day for Alex, the number six rusher in the country coming in. But he picked up a big first down there. Ditto with plenty of time. Fires complete. And it is Eric Matthews this time. Out to the 48-yard line, 15 yards on the pickup. This is like passing 101 right here. This time it's a zone coverage. The tight end goes out in the flat, number 95 right there. And then curling out the outside, and Ditto hits the curl route in between the linebackers, and a really nice catch to the outside of the play. But that ball was thrown in the position you have to throw it, away from the coverage. John Pacey looking on. There's nobody that would like to see Indiana beat Penn State more than that guy. Right now, he's just not involved, except as an inspirational leader from the sideline. Ditto, in his stead, has looked sharp throwing the ball. Just inside the 49, it's a first down. Smith, ooh. There's just not much there. Phil Yaboa Cody made first contact, number 43. Alex Smith made first by number 43. Yaboa Cody, the senior out of Montreal by way of Ghana, Africa. He's a good football player. Oh, Cody, it's those uniforms that attract those guys from uh, Africa. They, they love those plain uniforms. <laughs> This year, the, you know, there's some talk about putting the 125th college football anniversary patch on the pads. And the Penn State seniors, especially their center, Bucky Greeley said, no way, coach. We're not messing up these great uniforms with a patch. Ditto gets rid of it at the last second, and Stoner could have been off to the races had he held on. He just couldn't find the handle. Well, that was a nice throw by Ditto that time. Brandon Noble, number 93, was putting a rush on, and Ditto, because of his height, could wait that extra second. You see him scan the field. Now he's going left. Now he looks back right, left. That's a quarterback that knows how to throw the ball looking around, and Noble is able to get that pass off and avoid the sack. And really nice. They... Really nice look at how a quarterback has to keep his eyes moving in the pocket. Not too many times today has Indiana been stuck in a third and ten. That's what they have here. Average yards to go, you can see six. They're doing a pretty good job on their third down conversions. Their second, third and ten of the day. A big one here, and Ditto lays it out, and just a little too far for a Jamu Stoner. And Ditto's got to scrape himself off the artificial turf again. Really like the feel that Chris Ditto has in the passing game. He knew the rush was going to come. He couldn't wait for Stoner to get open. He had to throw it to a spot. So he put a little air under it, kind of threw it there, and just picked out the wrong spot. But a nice job. Those are the way that you avoid sacks by throwing the spots in the, in the defense. Jim, Jim DeGiulio to punt. This is not quite what he wanted, but he might get a good bounce. At least it'll go out inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. 38-yard kick with 12.22 left third quarter. Penn State on offense when we come back. Working inside its own 15 again on the 14 on first down. And stood up straight to Jonna Carter. Trevor Wilmot and company are there. Hasn't been a lot on the ground today for either team for that matter. This is an important period for the IU defense to hold the advantage of the win. If they can force Penn State to punt and take advantage of the win with their offense, they can stay in the football game. Penn State hasn't been afraid to throw going into the wind, though. No, so they've, been, they've been pretty balanced into the wind or, or whatever, and I, I really think the reason that is because the defensive fronts at Indiana has given them a lot of checkoffs. Second down and nine. Play fake it to Carter, go right back to him, in and out of his hands, and they're lucky they didn't get it intercepted. The hit was Derek Terrell, 
on to John a. Carter, and Warnicky almost had the ricochet. That was his second receiver that time that Collins came to. They wanted to go to Kyle Brady on this play, but he was bracketed in, in and out on the play. You'll see Brady right here. He's going to come down and hook, but the Indiana defense has a good beat on him. Do not let him get the ball. You'll see inside out, the strong safety and the linebacker take the throw away and force Collins into a tough throw. Five of the eight drives for Penn State have started inside their own 20, and now they got third and nine from the 15. Out in the flat, trying to get to the first down is Mill, and he won't get there. And credit Alfonso Thurman and Chris Mucci. Chris Mucci did a nice job that time, staying back on the tight end Brady, and then making the play happen in front of him and coming up and wrapping up and make the tackle. This is a well-coached defense today, and you got to give the credit to Joe Novak. Yep. They are making the plays. They're coming up in the secondary and wrapping up, and they look as sound as I've seen them all year. Beatty back awaiting the punt from Juravicious, who's had one partially blocked by Lance Brown today. Third time Penn State's had a three and out, so that Indiana defense Gary's talking about doing a nice job. Juravicious got all of this one into the wind. Beatty. Tracks it at the 35 and gets dropped in his tracks at the 35. Excellent coverage down there to make the stop. Stephen Pitts. We have time to check in with Mike Tirico. Mike. Oh, Brad. Beginning of yep. the football game, too. Consider we're using anything we can find that has any <laughs> weight to keep any of our stuff from blowing away up here. It's uh, definitely gone from a half bottle of hairspray to a full bottle of hairspray. <laughs> That's really strong, too. At the 16-yard line, third and 29. Three wide outs for Ditto. Prevent defense in there for Penn State. Ditto steps up, pumps once. Brings it back, goes down the middle for what he can, and Smith can't hold it anyway. Well, that could have been... Uh, they would have liked to have a little bit more yardage just to be able to air out a punt, but Smith doesn't hold the reception. And I think this is the first time today Coach Mallory is a little befuddled by how his troops played on that series. And considering where that ball was punted by Penn State and where they're going to get it back now, that was a nice exchange for the Penn State team. They're going to have great field position. And now Jim DeGiulio would like to blast one here if he could. Archie is back. Penn State. And it's not the best kick that he's had, that's for sure. Maybe he'll hit a Penn State player again. One did earlier. This one's going to be tracked down at the 46-yard line. And Indiana saying it. That touched a Penn State player, but I don't think they're going to get the call. The 46-yard line. Ever since the days of Prohibition has been Nick's English Hut. Brad, during fireside chats, the old-timers like to tell the story of quarterback Harry Gonzo in the 1968 Rose Bowl. Last play of the game against Southern Cal comes to the line and calls out the signals. Nick's English Hut. Play went for no gain. <laughs> and most of the people that come out of there are a little Gonzo when they leave. <laughs> John he always finds a nice warm fire, doesn't he? John Eisenbarger, Jade Butcher, and Harry Gonzo. Their Rose Bowl triumphant there. 17-7 Penn State. They want to get to the Rose Bowl. Come in unbeaten in the Big Ten. Perfect overall at 7-0 in their best starting field position. The 46-yard line with a 10-point lead. Checking it off again. Eight-man front. Collins loads it and rifles it for Ingram. Trying to make the adjustment incomplete. Even though he threw it hard, you could tell the wind had a little bit of an effect on that pass. And actually, his strategy was right to throwing into the wind. Let's take a look at that last punt to see if it hit Brian Gelsheiser right here. Here's the ball up here. Here's number 16, Brian Gelsheiser. The IU coaches thought it hit him in the leg. After further review, nope. two out of three for the officials. They're getting better. Missed him by that much. <laughs> Second down at 10. And that wind is really whipping right into the face of Penn State's offense. So they'll keep it on the ground and an end around. Carter, Kajana back in there and down to the 40-yard line of first down and a pickup of 14. Very fluid runner, Kajana Carter. Brad, everyone talks about the athleticism of their skilled players. A lot of the coaches talk about the athleticism of the offensive line. This time, number 54, Marco Rivera and, Buck and Jeff Hardings, the two guards. Penn State likes to keep their guys very athletic, a little undersized. No 300-pound lineman playing guard for Penn State. Their guards have to pull and run. They help. 
pull Carter out to a first down, and now Kajana's got it out of the backfield. John Hammerstein made the stop at the 37-yard line of Carter, who's back in there and playing with an injured wrist. And that looks like Rivera, the guy we're just talking about, maybe down on the play. And he's up. And going to stay on the sideline. So Wayne Holmes will take his spot on that front wall for Penn State. Penn State came with a little bit of a screen that time, and it was Rivera that was out trying to lead it and uh, kind of stuck his shoulder into the ground, it appears. He had a little bit of a stinger. Indiana changed up some defensive personnel at the last moment with a second and six facing them. Penn State coming in, tops in the country in total offense at 543 a game, and they're over 300 now, but still just leading by 10. Carter, big opening off the right side, and he's down to the 31. He's about a yard short of a first down. Hammerstein and Wilmot made the stop, and let's check in with Mike. Brad Collins downfield, faking the pass to pick up the touchdown. Third and one. Carter got it. Lance Brown wraps him up, but not before he picked up about four yards. To John Carter, you know, he's not having that great a day, you think, and all of a sudden you look and, whoops, he's got 80 yards on about 11 carries. I'll tell you, the last two plays, though, he had to go over and tell Andre Johnson, I love you, man. He's going to come down here and push his block down about six yards on the, on the play. Johnson, number 68, takes his man, drives him out of the hole, and keeps running with him. That is the type of offensive tackle blocking that can have a lot of people run behind. Boy, no doubt about that. Johnson had a couple of guys in his path that time. First down at the 26. Indiana would like to come up with a big play to prevent any more Penn State scoring. And they'd like to get the ball back with a win, which they have 6.50 left in this quarter. Collins throws a streak to Scott. He can't hold it. Smedley was covering. The ball went to the perfect man that time. But again, you have to give Penn State something on offense. Joe Novak says, hey, we just got to hope he throws a couple of them high. That time Smedley had outside technique. No help in the middle, and Joe Novak dodged one defensive coordinator right there, and he's changing up his fronts the whole game. He knows that he was not going to shut down this offensive football team. He just had to keep the, the game close and hope his offense scores some points. Ingram goes out. Both wideouts to the left side for Collins, but he comes back the other way to Archie, who made a nifty catch and goes out of bounds just inside the 21-yard line where it's going to bring up a third down, about four. Other scores around the Big Ten. Michigan State leading Northwestern. Purdue and Michigan had a good one going. And the Big East, Rutgers and Temple. Halftime in the SEC in that one. It's third and about four, but considering that Penn State is into such a strong wind, I think this is four down territory for Penn State. So you can really dial any play you want right now. Penn State will probably go for it on fourth down. Collins has been intercepted twice today. Now third and four, he fires, and it hit his best receiver, or arguably one of the best of the Big Ten, right in the hands, and he couldn't hold it. Bobby Ingram dropped it. But now let's see if it's four down territory. Looks like Conway's coming out to try a field goal. Well, Joe's got those sleeves partially rolled up now. <laughs> the game goes longer and stays close, they'll go be down his T-shirt. Now, this one's going to be very close to the best Conway has done this year. It's not to say he doesn't have a strong leg. One for one today from 30 yards. His season long is 39. This will be 38. I'd be looking for the fake if I was Indiana on this play. Lance Brown is a guy that can block kicks if Indiana can get their hand on one. Bill Collins to hold. The kick drifts to the left and drifts just right for Conway. Got it. Hey, that's pretty impressive because that thing went about 10 yards past into a strong win. And it curled in. You talk about great golf shots. Conway got himself one there, and now his team and 433 total yards. They're low. And that was and that was against Iowa, and they scored 61 points. Uh -huh. Here's what they've done today: 318. You got to give Joe Novak's Indiana defense credit. I know that sounds crazy, but they held Penn State without a touchdown there, forced a field goal, and it's still a football game. 13 point difference. Penn State in front. And now the wind has come up so strongly that uh, Brian Miller, I think, is going to have to hold the ball for Conway to kick this thing off. They've been squibbing him in this direction. That's why I was surprised they went with the field goal, but Conway really gave a boot to it. He sure did. 
Miller to hold. Conway to kick. Again, they dribble it down the middle, and this one is picked up by Glover. And Sean Glover, nice job, almost to the 40-yard line. So that's pretty good field position for the Indiana offense to come back out on the field. Let's check in with Mike Tirico. All right, Brad, Penn State, one of the... 13, 623 left. Indiana with a big win that it's back. Chris Ditto stays in at quarterback. Alex Smith trying to get something going with a ground game, and this time does get a nice carry. Six yards for the freshman. He has really had to work for today. Probably his toughest game as far as struggling was against Wisconsin. We saw that game yeah. and did that game, and that's because Wisconsin was out front so far that Indiana had to throw the ball. I'll tell you, the wide receiver, Eddie Beatty, wants his job back. Watch him come down and take on the secondary this time. That's a, defense, that's a wide receiver that wants to play. He kind of got stoned. He got, at least he came in there and made it. He got Herring, Herring and Gelsheiser. That's right. That's what you want your job back on the field to go block. Second down along two for the Hoosiers. Trying to get it back in Penn State territory. They come the other way. Try as he may, Smith can't get a first down. Cliff Dingle made the stop defensively. Cliff Dingle plays the hero position. Of course, Clint Holes was the man who was playing that position. We got chairs falling down around us. Everything. <laughs> you think the wind's not blowing up here? <laughs> Cliff Dingle playing the hero position. And the reason it's called the hero is he reaches up a number of times and he actually lines up at the line of scrimmage as an extra linebacker. And that's where he was that time as Penn State went with an eight-man front. Third down and a very long yard. And a big yard it is. Two tight ends set for the Hoosiers. They desperately need this one to keep the drive alive. The toss to Smith. No! Gelsheiser. And Dingle. You're right. I was waiting for the other call because Dingle's a guy that came from one side, forced to play back inside, and this is a key call right now. And the only reason that Bill Mallory's even considering whether he should punt or run the ball is because he's with the wind. He doesn't want to give it up. Dingle comes in and fills so quickly that time. Alex Smith isn't able to get his shoulders turned up and make the first down. Second straight three and out. Not what Indiana was looking for. Jim DiGiulio to punt. This time he got a spiral out of the deal, but it takes the wrong bounce. And Penn State will have it at its own 26-yard line. Only a 27-yard kick. DeGiulio's not liking that. Coming up, ball. 20 to 7. Nittany Lions, 416 left third quarter. Collins quickly into Ingram, and he didn't hold that one. It's, it's just so tough to throw the ball into a win like that. If you just fix it for the wrong angle, the ball just dives. The nose was down on that throw a bit, and uh, the ball just dove into the ground. Indiana has taken advantage of the win and playing an eight-man front with five defensive linemen and three linebackers on the field, forcing Collins into the audibles and the quick slants of the fades. Collins on the day, 19 of 29. He's over 200 yards, and that is the 13th time in his career, over 200 yards, a school record. Another end around coming. Here it comes. Freddie Scott waits for his blockers, and Freddie tiptoes down the sideline and might have gotten a first down out of that. Warnicky knocked him out and might be close enough to measure from the other sticks on the other side of the field. It's amazing looking into that face and seeing his dad's face <laughs> staring back at me. I've been in the huddle a number of times looking at that face. It is a first down without measurement. First down at the 36-yard line. 4.04 left third quarter. John Carter in there, gets it on a little delayed draw and runs smack down into John Hammerstein. I almost said Mike Hammerstein. There's been so many Hammersteins play football in the Big Ten. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of them. He's one of a long line. John, whose brother Mike was an All-American at Michigan. Mark, all Big Ten at Michigan. Matt played at Yale, and now here he is at Indiana. They're running out of Hammersteins for the Big Ten. And much like his brothers, kind of undersized but never quits. And they dropped Carter for a loss at second down 11. 
They'll try and end around again of sorts with Kajana Carter. Flag down and Carter down at the 45 yard line. About a yard short of the first down. But again, I thought I saw a flag fly in from the backside. Yeah, I think Nathan Davis, number 98, that time stepped off sides just as the ball was snapped and didn't get back. Kind of interesting whether Penn State will take this call. I mean, uh, they're yeah, so they're close gonna, to the first down. They're going to take the play. I think play. they would. I think they would take the play, too. Yep. It would be second down at about four and a half, or it will be third down in inches, I think. Uh, we'll wait for Tom Quinn to straighten it out, but he's given Kerry Collins something close to that in a description. If I had a six foot five, 240 40 pound quarterback. Huh? the defense, decline, take the play. Okay. I think go. I'd take that third and inches play right now with my quarterback and just let him quarterback sneak it. I just touched Bucky Greeley in the backside and lean <laughs> forward, huh? Well, the balloons are gone. So much for the balloons. They are now somewhere in a different county headed out of the stadium. Full house backfield for Penn State. They give it off. Their fullback gets him a first down at Brian Mill. One of their two fullbacks, I should say. We're talking to offensive coordinator from Penn State, the guy who's been there 24 years, Fran Ganner. He said, you know, our fullbacks are so underrated, but do a great job. Whitman and Milne both are able to move in and do a lot of things. As you take a look at Fran Ganner, guy who says, we just run the same plays we've always run here. We've got better guys. First down. Just outside their own 48-yard line with Nittany Lions with a 20-7 lead here late in the third quarter. Archie. Got to the Indiana side of the field before we ran into Nathan Davis. And we check in with Adrian Karsten. Right, a lot of the success that the Nittany Lions are having to do today, or, or the success they're having today, has a lot to do with cheese steak. Work with me on this one. <laughs> All right. Now, food's important. You guys know that. VFW Post 1046, back in uh, State College. The offensive line goes there every Thursday to eat Philly cheesesteak. Now, Bucky Greeley, the center, started this a couple of years ago. Last year, the week off before Michigan, they didn't go to eat cheesesteak. You know what happened? They lost. There you have it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why we make sure we feed ribs every Friday night to Adrian Karsten so we can have a decent game. And I don't think he's missed yet this year. Oh, not last night. He, was, <laughs> got he his had money the double worth, rack. He, got his money's worth last night. Well, he told him we're going to have to send him out to eat early, and then we'll catch up with him because it takes him another half an hour longer than we take to eat. Okay. So let's see if they don't try to get the ball back to Brady now. He's the guy that opened things up for him in the first half, I thought. Kyle Brady, the tight end. Seventh play of the drive on the second and six. Throw it out to Mill, the fullback. Dives his way to a first down at the 40. Pinnock is the guy that took him off his pins, but not before he picked up the first down. Mill's only caught five passes coming into this game, and again, a screen pass to the weak side of the formation behind Brady that time. And Penn State seems to be methodically moving the ball down the field right now. The second catch for Mill in this football game, so he has seven on the year, but. Uh, Penn State has used the win smartly, I think. They're just trying to make first downs now, not going for the big plays. Freddie Scott in motion on a first down. Penn State at the Indiana Fort. Counter, Carter, only about a yard. And Alfonso Thurman, who leads Indiana in tackles again this year, as he seems to for the last two or three, in on the hit. Leading tackler the last two years, Alfonso Thurman. I think that wrist is really bothering, bothering Kajana Carter right now. He carried the ball that time in his left hand when he ran to the right, and he prefers to carry it in his right hand. So I think that's really given him some problems in this game. It doesn't look like he's running with the you know, verve that he usually runs with in a game. Second down of 10. They're down during a minute. Here comes a blitz on Collins. He fires out. Oh, that was close to being picked off, intended for Freddie Scott. And Smedley was very close. And Eric Smedley says, come on, let's get into it like we were earlier. <laughs> Does Smedley know they got one more down out there before they... <laughs> <laughs> it's not a punt coming up yet, Eric. You might see more of Freddie Scott in the next play. Right. <laughs> Bill Mallory knows there's one more down. Bill Mallory, whose whole family is involved in football. His sons who played ball. His wife, who he says, is the true coach of the family. 
and he's looking for his defense to come up with something big. Third and ten, Penn State. Carter, big hole right side. Kajana Carter to the 21. And he rips off a 19-yard gain on third and ten. I'll tell you what, we've talked about Kyle Brady, what a great threat he is both blocking and passing. This time he shows going to show it blocking at the end of this line of scrimmage right here. He just engulfs his man. He's right here. Watch him just move into the side, takes on Lewis Pinnock, and just walls him inside. When you're 260 pounds, you can move your feet like Brady can. You can run to the strong side of the formation, the tight end side of the formation, anytime you want to. Harry lines up. This time, Mill goes up the middle, and he gets about four. And we have a chance to check in with Mike Tirico. Gentlemen, Auburn, we see 13-point lead here in the Big Ten. Penn State leading Indiana. 12th play of the Penn State drive. Mike Archie, submarine by Derek Terrell, the inside linebacker. Senior out of Monroe, Ohio. Nice hit. And that will end the third quarter in Bloomington. We played three. Number two, Penn State. Pass interference, Indiana. Coach Mallory, who jogs every day, showed his speed coming down that sideline to object to the call. Smedley's technique was pretty good. I think they got it with the illegal use of the hands after the ball. But was this ball catchable is the question I have. Kind of hits him. The ball is about and blowing about eight yards in front of the play. I think that's a pretty good call. He kind of hit him when the ball was in the air. And uh, you never know what Bobby Ingram can get to if he didn't have his hand on him right there. And uh, unfortunately, you're going to get called with it on that play. Very unhappy head coach. And now it's first and goal for Penn State. I told you Smedley was uh, celebrating a little too early on that drive. Uh -huh. Timeout on the field. As Collins will come over and talk to Joe Paterno and Bill Mallory will try to... Brady, 81. Now Carter with another 100-yard day so far, trying to add to it. He got a couple, that's it. Trevor Wilmot did a nice job that time coming from the outside, running around the blocker and making the tackle. Kajana Carter, 17 carries, 116 yards. His sixth 100-yard rushing day of the season. And he's going to come out. They're going to bring in Jason Slode, and they're just going to have a load of backs in the Penn State backfield behind Collins. There's the numbers on Kajana. He's out of there now, though. They give it off to Milne. Powers his way. Did he get there? Not quite. So close. Last week against Michigan State, Indiana had a goal line standing on fourth down. Michigan State scored a touchdown. Very hotly disputed call last week. Uh, the Indiana defense thought they stopped him, and the referee signaled touchdown this time. Hammerstein and Terrell do a nice job of stopping Milne on the play. He lunges forward again, very close to the line. But this time, they, Penn State does not get the call. Mike Archie just hustled into the Penn State huddle with all those fullbacks in there. Would he ever give them a change of pace if they hand it off to him? He's got all kinds of speed. He's lined up to the left of that full house backfield. 15th play of the drive. It's Archie for the touchdown. Knife's through behind his right guard. And his lead blockers in Penn State's got six more. And they're going to go for two more. No big surprise on this play. All the receivers will be coming in the play. Ken Olsmeyer that time did a nice job at opening that hole. Milne also. So the offense stays in there. They lead 26 to 7. And as Gary anticipated, they'll go for two here to try to put themselves in front by three touchdowns. Archie stays in there. Justin Williams with Collins and Ingram as the extra wideouts. Over the top to Archie. Touchdown, or extra point good, I should say. I, I, I don't know. I may be off here, but my first glance is that Indiana only had 10 men on the field for that two-point play. May have only looked that way. Well, the, <laughs> but the 11th guy was really in low position. Reading the quarterback's eyes. Three wide outs for Ditto on second and ten. Fires short. Looking for the run after the catch is Stoner, and he did get decent yardage. Picked up about nine. It'll be third and one after we check in with Mike Tirico. 
The battle for second place behind Florida State and the ACC getting more exciting. Virginia down 10, Simeon will... Straight up the middle is Cheney. And he bursts his way out for 11 or 12 and a first down, Indiana. Tony Pittman made the tackle. Cheney, who's seen his playing time diminish with the emergence of Alex Smith. Nice job this time by Jay Sive, number 52, playing center, opens up a hole. Cheney's able to gash right up the middle and pick up the first down. Sive playing with that broken hand and has a smaller cast on his left hand this game, but it's still inhibiting from holding, which is tough to do. You can't hold, you can't block anymore. You can see it looks like a little white bowling ball of his left hand. Here's Cheney coming to the right side. We're running to Gelsheiser, but he did pick up five. Cheney had arthroscopic knee surgery right before the season. And last year, against Penn State, 73 yards on 26 carries. Today he's in there now taking Alex Smith's spot for a time. Tough, uh, tough career for Cheney. It's the second time he's had knee surgery and problems with that knee. He's taken away a step from his game, but uh, still finishing off his career and running strongly today. 21 yards on four carry for Gervais. Second down at five. Football for the Hoosiers at their own 47. Ditto ran into the play action, almost hurt himself, and now he is a little more hurt. Yaboa Cody from the backside takes him down. I'll tell you, Bill Mallory that time was stomping up and down on the sideline. They finally trying to take advantage of a big play action pass, and Chris Ditto bumps into the man he's supposed to fake to, and that's really what caused the problem in the play right here. You see it, Cheney either goes too tight or Ditto goes too wide, and from the backside, Yaboa Cody's going to eat it up. And force a third down and 15. Four wide receivers for Ditto. And we're down to 11 minutes in the game. Ditto fires, lays it out. Stoner couldn't hold it. It took just an instant too long for that pass to get there. Enough for Kim Herring to come over and put the hit on him, and he couldn't hang on. It was nicely thrown that time, but you're right. The ball had a little bit too much air under it, and uh, Krim Herring came from the outside. Cliff Dingle, number 26, is going to be playing man-to-man -man coverage on the inside, and then the safeties are deep reading the quarterback's eyes. Threw it over Dingle, but from the backside, Herring was able to break it up. Eighth punt for Jim DiGiulio. He's had a busy day. And he's really only had one punt that he's going to write home to mom and dad about. Oh, he might have one here. He hit this one. Archie backpedals to the 10. Flags are down. Archie in to the secondary, and he's on his way. Mike Archie might score, but I think it's going to come back. All the way for the touchdown is Archie. But there are flags all over the place back at the 15-yard line. It would have been a 90-yard touchdown return. I think you can forget about it. I think Chris Campbell, number 11, is the guy who blocked from behind that time. He comes off a bit dejected and, uh, and on the other end Mike Arch has got to be saying you mean I ran that far for <laughs> well he got a nice call from you though the whole way you know you stayed with it I give you a lot of credit you no. knew it was no play it looked like candy wrappers on the field down there I thought it was coming back there's yellow all over from the 10 to the 15 and Tom Quinn will bring his group back to tell us the inevitable. I think it was uh, Eric Matthews that he was uh, holding or pushing. Here it is right here, Chris Campbell. Left side of the screen uh, is where go. it is. There, there, there it is, go. right here from the left side. Against Eric Matthews is the side. Pushing from behind, there's no doubt about it. And it was a block that wasn't necessary right. on the play. How many times do you see that, too? Yeah. So many times, that's the case. So instead of a 90-yard touchdown, it is first and 10 at the six-yard line. And I'm sure uh, Joe Paterno wasn't too happy, in, uh, Adrian. To John Carter, dragged down. Got to be Alfonso Thurman. <laughs> you do these guys a few games, you just get a feeling of the type of guys that make the type of pay, uh, plays, and then Alfonso Thurman just ran in behind that play and made it. Played middle linebacker last year, moved him outside because of Terrell, and this time he just comes in behind the guard that time and drags down John Carter, and that's as good as you can do. Thurman, the leading tackle the last couple of years. Yep. Forces second down at 14. Clock winding its way to the 10 minute mark. Alfonso's got six more tackles today to add to his total. Now 
Penn State has to line up basically in its own end zone. Carter hit at the line of scrimmage. Eli Rashid makes that hit. Eli Rashid has been coming in alternating with Troy Drake and Hammerstein, and he's also been that fifth defensive lineman that comes on the field throughout the whole game. So now a sticky situation here as Penn State play it straight against Joe Novak's defense, or do they try to throw? And if so, that would be from the end zone. Brad, don't want to take anything away from Indiana because they play an outstanding football team, but Penn State really never has looked to be in this game fully yeah. and comfortable with the game. They seem to be a little lethargic all day. Carter in motion out of the backfield. Collins looks right, goes there, almost had it intercepted. Well, that was Trevor Wilmot who had his hands on it, and Freddie Scott was open behind him, but he made a nice play. That's the play that can change the game right there. There's been two plays I think Indiana had to have. That punt that hit the player from behind Pittman, and they didn't get the ball. And Trevor Wilmot right here able to pick it off. It didn't come up with the big play. You have to make big plays when you're playing a team that's a bit better than you. Wilmot made a nice play, but didn't make the great play. Jurevicious now, punting from his own end zone. That's got to be the all-name team. Well, I think it'd be a great pro wrestler right. with a name like that. <laughs> See if Indiana tries to block the punt. They partially blocked one on his first attempt of the day, and that was Lance Brown. They bring it. Did they get a piece of another one? They did. And the ball's going to come down. Was it Lance Brown again? It may have been. The ball rolls dead way out by the 34-yard line, but I think it was the senior safety, Lance Brown, who's Mr. Kick Blocker to the partially blocked punt. Gives them great field position, but they're going to have to strike early and often. And they'll go on the ground. Alex Smith, that's his longest run maybe of the day, second longest. Got 12 out of that. Lance Brown again, I think, coming from the punter's right side. The screen right, I think, gets his finger on it. He's right over here. He's going to come right inside and get his right hand on the ball. He barely tipped both of these, but the nice thing I think he did is even if he didn't get the ball, this time he wasn't going to hit the punter. Just got a finger on it. Two block punts. Not a bad day's work. First down. Indiana at the Penn State 23. Smith again finds an opening. Smith runs tough for nine more inside the 15. So maybe Indiana fooling Penn State a bit and that they're not putting the ball up as they run right into the teeth of the defense and pick up 19 yards or 20 yards in two carries. I think uh, Penn State is deployed for the pass considering Ditto's in, but uh, Steve Lee and Alex Smith did a good job of finding their running lane and making a play go again. They go on top on second down. It's short now. They maybe got one to play with here. A long yard to go on second down. <laughs> He'll stay with it on the ground, and inside the 10 goes Steve Lee. <laughs> and that is Steve Lee's first carry of the day. He had what would have been his first touchdown ever last week called back. Right, this is his second official carry. Right. His first carry didn't count, but he had a pretty nice one against Michigan State when he scored a touchdown on it, and it was called back for... It does count as good for a first down. First and goal, Smith. Maybe two. Stop made by Jeff Perry in the backfield who made the first contact. You see Smith still running as hard as he possibly can. He really enjoys the game of football. He's even got a smile on his face for the Penn State defense. And has had a tremendous redshirt freshman campaign. Second and goal at the seven yard line. And we've got seven minutes, five seconds left in the game. Smith ran into Gelsheiser. Pretty good collision at about the six. And now the Bloomington natives are a little bit restless that Indiana is taking so much time to try to get in the end zone as we are under seven minutes. You said it was Brian Gelsheiser that time, and he did an outstanding job of shedding the blocking fullback right here, Steve Lee. Gelsheiser is going to come in here and take on this block and then come up and make the play. Number 60 takes it on, stones the fullback, and then shakes him off and makes play. That's big-time linebacker. Two good collisions there. Correct myself. Third and goal. The end zone wide open. Touchdown to Stoner. His second of the day. Boy, somebody missed a coverage. There was no one within 10 yards of a John Lou Stoner. Uh-oh. 
If you blitz and you don't cover the main receiver, you're in trouble. <laughs> John Boo making his first start and making the most of it. Two touchdown catches of 35 and this time of six yards. Manilopoulos in for the point after and he's got it up and good with six minutes and 22 seconds left in the game. Penn State has the lead up by. For this guy, both come on the play. One of those two guys should have stayed home and covered Tuner. Stoner, excuse me. <laughs> I got you doing it now. <laughs> What'd you do that for? Well, that's know. as easy as it goes, pitch and catch. I said there was nobody within 10 yards. Make it 13 yards. <laughs> He's had a heck of a game. You know, and I was... It's helmet on right now to John Carter. Well, they won't go three and out this time. They might go 80 yards for a touchdown. Can John Carter on his way. One man left to beat, and he won't get it. Touchdown, 80 yards for the All-American candidate. Lights out. A team that can score on one play scoring drives has just done it again. Well, we were worried about a three and out. They didn't want to do it, so they did it one and out. We did a lot better than that. And that just shows you how explosive this offensive football team is. They can score literally on any play that they run with the power and talent they have on this football team. Ties his career-long run of earlier in the year, 80 yards for a touchdown. Give him 192 on the day. Conway in for the point after. Begin with Mike Tirico. Michael. Still trying to figure. At the 33-yard line, first down. In the end. Sunshine coming out now and Bloomington. The winds have died down too late to maybe help the Hoosiers, though. Alex Smith makes the catch out of the backfield. I tell you, the rest of the Big Ten is, is not going to be real excited about facing Chris Ditto the next couple of years. He has all the tools to be a big time passer in this league, and he's had a great football game in this game, and he's so calm, so relaxed, and uh, you know, I, I kind of believe that he made a be taking over this might be his football team right now 15 out of 23 today for Chris including a couple of touchdown tosses to a John Moose Stoner and as John Pacey on the sideline knowing that his day is done Ditto takes off with this one and he's got a first down Gelsheiser and Azik tracking down we're under five minutes I mean, he doesn't look fast, but watching the films against him against Michigan State, he had a lot of scrambles also. He does cover a lot of territory, but a six foot six kind of looks awkward out there running the ball, but has done a good job of moving around in the pocket. Four forty seven clock winding. Get off from the gun. Throws the screen out. Smith about an opening Alex Smith now he's into the secondary and he's off to the races he's got excellent speed but he's tracked down by Tony Pittman or was it Brian Miller it's Brian Miller that saved a touchdown 37 yards Alex Smith's gonna learn, have to learn how to kick up those feet when he feels those guys behind him. A little bit of a screen pass this, on this one. Catches the blitz, has the perfect play on. The lineman fit two nice blocks. Great vision by the redshirt freshman. Cutting back right here. Now, when you feel that guy there, kick those feet forward. I could never do it. I just saw some <laughs> of the guys do that. Guys like, like I played with, right? Otis Armstrong and those guys. Used to feel those guys on their heels and now kick away from them and go into the end zone. Do as I say, not as I do, huh? <laughs> Cheney, all wrapped up. Hey, that Gelsheiser is about as impressive as a linebacker as I've seen this year. Takes on blockers, changing the fronts. He is the type of senior leader that you love as an inside linebacker and in the great tradition of the Penn State linebacker. And yet, you know, talking with the Penn State coaches, and Jerry Sandusky, defensive coordinator in particular, they say, where does this guy fit in? in the all-time linebacking core and I, I don't think they think at all that he's in the 
the Jack Ham category type of thing. But yet the guy came in number nine in the Penn State career tackle charts, and he is up that total today. He is pretty solid. Ditto works his way around a whole bunch of trouble and gets down near the 16-yard line and ran into who else? Chris Ditto reminds me of Todd Collins in the way he avoids the rush and takes advantage of it. Let's check in with Mike Tirico. Mike? All right, let's wrap up this game in the ACC. We told you for... About to be 8-0 for the Nittany Lions. So Indiana's driving for third and eight. To the end zone again, man there. Oh, what a collision. Miller and his own man back there, Kim Herring. You could see that one coming, and the ball didn't get there fast yeah. enough for Stoner. The door closed a little bit early on that one. Oh, I hope these two are okay. That is a full out, running as fast as you can. Uh, two trains from different directions on the same track crash back there in the end zone. Wow. Again, throwing into the wind, that ball hung, but as impressive, though, is it still was a nice throw into the wind. Ditto's going to step into this ball. Hangs just a bit because it wasn't a great spiral, but you see it. Herring, whoa. Oh. Coming from one side and Miller from the other. That's wicked. One of them's up. Kim Herring is up. And Brian's still down. Brian Miller, a sophomore, who just caught Alex Smith a couple of moments ago on that screen pass and prevented a touchdown and trying to do the same on that pass defended, intended for uh, Stoner. I'm just glad to see everything's moving. 2.48 left in the game, and we'll take a break and come in to take their spot. It's fourth and eight, the spot Indiana's on right now. Maybe their last play on offense. And the ball loose. It will be their last play. Gelsheiser picks it up. Gelsheiser, after a huge day, is going all the way in a fumble recovery. Flag is down, but Gelsheiser takes it 75 yards for a touchdown. 12 tackles on the day, and then a fumble return for a score, unless it's coming back due to penalty. Marlon Forbes, number 46, is the guy that came from behind on the play. This would be the second long touchdown brought back. One was the punt return, remember, of 90 yards by Mike Archie. Yeah, I'm just wondering if they called it a face max uh, when he pulled, when he got uh, Ditto from behind. It's the only thing I can think of. Got the flag. Defensive pace mask. Wow. Major turnaround, huh? And now Brian Gelzer is going, I could use a blow here, Coach. Right. I didn't plan on doing this and not getting up with six points. You see, coming from the backside off the corner, number 46, Marlon Forbes is the guy who blitzes to Ditto's blind side. When he comes across, he gets Ditto with his left hand on the face mask. That's the call. When he comes across, he tries to rake, and he gets the face mask right there. That was the call, otherwise that was a touchdown. And you know, I didn't see anything else. That's the only thing I could think of. And uh, Gelsheiser said, well, that was a long run for nothing. No kidding. It was an inadvertent thing. Forbes did nothing really malicious there. He just jumped on a back and grabbed the nearest thing and it happened to be a face mask. If I was Forbes, I wouldn't get anywhere near number 16 for about a week. <laughs> well, he kind of caused a fumble too, so I guess That's uh, true. one goes with the other. Wouldn't have happened otherwise, I guess. And now it will be instead of a touchdown for Penn State, a fourth and three at the Penn State 11-yard line. So is this the final play for Indiana or not? We'll find out. A trail 35-14. Ditto. Across the middle. Picks up the first down. 